Hey there, once again, YouTube. It's Ben Freo coming at you with an update on the earthquake swarm that is currently ongoing uh, under Mount Hood right now and the ongoing seismicity near Ridgecrest, California and the coastal volcanic field, which recently got hit by a 7.1 and a 6.4. And thousands upon thousands of aftershocks, thousands more could not be located simply because the data was so saturated. And Caltech even admitted that as well. There are just so many earthquakes occurring that it basically is impossible to locate every single one of them. So we're going to take a look at those two things in just a second. I want to let you guys know about comments on my YouTube videos. Um, I really, I try to reply to as many as I can, but if I sit there and reply to every comment, you know, it's going to take almost an hour. So I just want to let you guys know if you ever have anything you really want to bring to my attention, please shoot me an email and my email address is always in the description box below. Or hit me up on Facebook, same name that I have on YouTube. So yeah, if you really want to get a hold of me, use those two options. I am still going to be trying to reply to as many comments as possible, but sometimes I do not have time to. So, today we're first going to take a look at the California earthquake swarm and ongoing aftershocks in this area. Remember, the number on the left is what you see in the map area on earthquake.usgs.gov. And the number on the right is the total in the entire world. Look at here are being reported for the entire world for just the past 24 hours of all magnitudes. 2024. That is a lot of earthquakes, guys. That's I think that's the most that's been reported for one day's time in the world. And you can see the large majority, almost all of them, I'm talking over 75% of the earthquakes reported for the world right now, are occurring in the Ridgecrest area. We can see aftershocks continue along the supposed fault zone in this area, which they still have not mapped out yet. Um, remember, there was a big crack that appeared. Uh, they, sh they showed on satellite imagery, actually, and it was a pretty good-sized crack, I believe two miles long or something like that. Very intriguing. And again, we see the aftershocks are occurring primarily along the fault zone, with a little bit of a swarm breaking out in the southern section of the coastal volcanic field. Then there's a space. Now, we talked about this in my most recent video just prior to this one. This space right here is coincidentally where the magma chamber is lo supposedly located for the coastal volcanic field. Yeah, so basically the magma chamber is not showing any seismicity much at all. But up to the north-northwest of the magma chamber, we are seeing seismicity as well. An ongoing earthquake swarm, which USGS did report on with the first ever alert posting for coastal volcanic field on volcanoes.usgs.gov. So it's very interesting. It's almost like this activity is possibly squeezing the magma chamber like a tube of toothpaste, basically. So I just want to let you guys know, 1,676 of all magnitudes, 1,682 actually of all magnitudes in this location over the past 24 hours. Let's scroll all the way up, go to one day, magnitude 2.5. We see about 72. And last night, it did seem seismicity did start to increase. It, did, it looked like it started to increase, guys. There are actually a few mid-range threes, and it did see more earthquakes were being reported during this time frame. So I do not believe this situation is over. There still could be a larger earthquake in the future in this area, but that seems less likely right now. Again, I'll leave, I'll leave a link to the uh, video that I made in the description box below. Go check it out. It shows the professional publication, which shows a possible correlation between strike-slip tectonics in this region possibly having a connection with volcanic activity in the future. Again, a link to that will be in the description box below. Let's go check out the Mount Hood Earthquake Swarm. But first, there were two very tiny earthquakes at Mount St. Helens, 0 0.5 at 3.7 kilometers in depth, and a negative 0 0.1 at 2.3 kilometers in depth, directly under the summit of Mount St. Helens. And just under the northwestern slopes of Mount Rainier, we did see a 1.0 at 0 0.4 kilometers in depth. None too crazy there. But look at Mount Hood, guys. 41 reported earthquake events ongoing as uh, a part of an earthquake swarm that is currently striking the south southwestern section of Mount Hood in this area. Now, this isn't too crazy. Let's go to the past seven days, all magnitudes. Continue anyway. Notice there were 60, and the majority of the seismicity did start on the beginning of July 8th, UTC day. So it's very interesting to see an earthquake swarm in this area, but it is not too, too crazy. I mean, the magnitudes, let's go check out the largest magnitudes, which were within the swarm just in the past few hours. Let's go down, click largest magnitude first. 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2, 2, 2, 2, multiple twos, multiple high to mid-range ones. 
and then the smallest was a 0 0.3. Barely any zeros, though. Most of them are above magnitude 1 to magnitude 2.1, occurring primarily very shallow near the surface to about 4.7 kilometers in depth, probably a maximum of 5 kilometers in depth. So it is very interesting seeing an earthquake swarm here, but it isn't, it's not unprecedented though. Let's take a look at historical seismicity for Mount Hood, shall we? Okay, here we are at pnsn.org. And we noticed that PNSN did put out a post just real quick on Twitter. Cascade Volcanoes Observatory continues to monitor the situation closely. So far, about 40 earthquakes just today, 60 in the past two to three days, but 40 in the past day at two to three miles in depth or so. They continue to monitor the situation closely. Now let's take a look at historical seismicity for Mount Hood. You can find this on their website, pnsn.org. And go to Volcano Seismicity right here and go to Mount Hood. Seismicity in Mount Hood is primarily characterized by fairly intense swarms of microquakes, which typically occur about four to seven kilometers south of the summit. So basically it's the same type of seismicity that on that does occur at Mount Hood from time to time. Over three quarters of the earthquakes that were located at Mount Hood during the 1990s occurred in these types of swarms. These swarms usually last from a few hours to a couple of days and have had as many as 50 well-located earthquakes in as few as four. Well, we are almost to the 50 mark, guys. Very, very close. So this isn't the largest swarm ever, but it's definitely one of the largest that we've had in quite some time for Mount Hood. The largest event in any swarm usually does not occur at the beginning, such as a main shock aftershock sequence. The largest event in the roughly 15 sequences since the 90s varied from the largest magnitude per swarm from a magnitude 1.6 to a magnitude 3.5. In February 2012, a very small earthquake swarm took place resulting in a blog posting on the PNSN web pages. Below is a time-depth plot of earthquakes located directly under Mount Hood since 2010. This plot is updated weekly until 2020 when a new plot will start. Can you imagine we're almost to 2020? Sounds like we're in the future, guys. My goodness. Unless, of course, unusual activity takes place that suggests a different time sequence is needed to better interpret that activity. Keep in mind that PNSN earthquake recording and processing system changed in a very major way starting in 2012, and thus there could be small biases or changes introduced in event detection, location, and size. We think these changes are very small. They are very small changes. But one should still be aware of this possibility. Now, they continue to state that all of the earthquakes in the Mount Hood sequences have characteristic waveforms similar to tectonic earthquakes. That would be called volcano tectonic earthquakes, and yes, they do. Swarms of these types of events are fairly common on many volcanoes. These are in contrast to low-frequency volcanic earthquakes, which a few did pop up at Lassen Peak in California last month, and I talked about that. Those were pretty interesting to analyze, which have a very different character and may be indicators of a possible eruption, but we're not seeing any of those LF events right now. While some earthquakes occur directly under the edifice, most of the Mount Hood events likely are occurring on a fault or fault system located to the south of the volcano and represent either its reaction to regional tectonic stresses or possibly deep-seated volcanic stress below the region. Interesting. Now, in 1999, an earthquake swarm began in Mount Hood in northern Oregon early Monday morning, January 11, 1999, and pr produced more than two dozen earthquakes that day. So it was a smaller swarm than what we are seeing right now, but the magnitudes were larger, guys. The largest of which were magnitudes 3.2 and a 3.0. Following a pause in activity on Tuesday and Wednesday, another magnitude 3.2 earthquake occurred, followed by a magnitude 3.0 earthquake at 8.13 a.m. Pacific time. The largest earthquakes were felt in Timberline, Brightwood, Parkdale, and Mount Hood Meadows. A paper published in 2005 studied the early swarms in great detail. The primary conclusion of the study was that these swarms, maybe most, are related primarily to regional tectonic forces and do not necessarily have a volcanic origin. But you never know. Now notice we do have showing some earthquake swarms all the way back to about 2010. Notice and remember this is depth on the left. Excuse me, depth on the left. Uh, time period on the bottom in years. So we do see that most of the time when they're linear like this, kind of like we see today, that is showing an earthquake swarm very close to a few days to maybe even a week or so. So we are seeing some earthquake swarms back behind 2015, especially an earthquake swarm, which was pretty interesting, around 2010-2011. And here's today's earthquake swarm right here, 
which started on July 8th, 2019 UTC day. So we're going to go take a look at these events using, let's go to Mount Hood at volcanoes.usgs.gov. I was going to use Tim, but it's not showing the earthquake events as well as I would want it to. So we're going to take a look at the seismic data from TDH. And just by looking at the web recorder, just in the past few hours, look at all those earthquakes, guys. All those earthquakes. Now they are reporting now 42 for the past 24 hours. So I will make an analysis page on my website probably tonight or tomorrow morning. So keep an eye out for that if you wish. Uh, I'm going to show a lot of waveforms and frequency data like I usually do. Let's see here. What station I was going to use again? Okay, I was going to use TDH in the UW network. Let's take a look at it in the Seismic Program Swarm right now. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm, and I talked about this the other day. We did see a small swarm starting on July 8th, UTC day, which basically is when this earthquake swarm started. We see some earthquakes there, and we see some earthquakes there, some earthquakes there, and some there as well. All have basically high range frequencies indicative of volcano tectonic activity. And let's go forward. Now, we do see a few more earthquakes ongoing. It calmed down for a little bit, and then recently we saw a big spurt in activity. More earthquakes there. And notice how we do have more earthquakes down here. Look at all these, guys. That's a very interesting signal. What is that? That's very intriguing. What is that? That looks very weird, guys. But it doesn't go below 5 hertz. It starts at about, what is that? I got to pan this down a little bit. That starts at about 3 hertz or so. I don't know what that is. I, that's very intriguing. I'll check that out later. But we are seeing multiple earthquakes. Now, going forward, check this out. Boom! Look at all of these earthquakes, guys. Now, sadly, this station does not go above about 2,000 amplitude count, which, you know, I'm really not happy about. Really don't like how it's like that. But we still can get a good idea of the frequency content of these earthquakes. Rapid fire swarm. This is what I consider a rapid fire swarm when they incurred such rapid succession. And you could tell there are many, many tiny earthquakes that have had not, uh, excuse me, have not been reported, likely will not be because they're hard to be located. And yeah, guys, we are seeing a good amount of earthquakes. Look at all of these earthquakes, way more than just 42 right now. But look at that. Look at all of that right there. My goodness, guys. Yeah, way more than 42. Way, way more than 42. And you could tell all of these are earthquakes. Let's take a look at some of the smallest ones. Those are definitely earthquakes. Clear PNS wave arrivals. Look at that, guys. My goodness. So Mount Hood is seeing a fairly intense earthquake swarm compared to past activity. Of course, earthquake swarms like this do occur at Mount Hood from time to time. But this is one of the most intense that I have ever seen. Looks like two earthquakes right there, actually. Very intriguing, guys. So what is going on at Mount Hood? We're still going through. Still going through. Look at all of these earthquakes. Almost every spike that you see is an earthquake, guys. Look at that. I'm still going through. It's still not done. Look, we got four right here. Four or five. Notice that one, two, three, four, five. Just within, I'm going to say, less than a minute. So it's definitely considered a rapid fire swarm, kind of like the ones that we see at Yellowstone from time to time. Look at the energy behind this. I mean, the magnitudes are not crazy. Again, the largest is like a 2.1 or a 2.2. But still, the energy, how many are occurring in such a short time frame is very intriguing, guys. Look at all these. I'm still not through all the data yet. I am still not through at all. Keep going, keep going. A lot of earthquakes, guys. Whoops. And then it starts to die down a little bit. It is starting to calm, I believe. But we could definitely see another spurt in seismicity very soon in Mount Hood. Because this was definitely a very interesting earthquake swarm. Two, two more earthquakes right there. Some more earthquakes right there. Look at this, guys. This is just exactly, whoops. This is exactly what we see at Yellowstone Caldera from time to time. Let me see those rapid fire swarms that I report on. Look at that. Look at all of these guys. <laughs> Still going through. Still got quakes. 
Still got quakes. Instead of got milk, it's got quakes. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says that. Got quakes? I should really do that. I, I think I'm going to do that. Because you know you can make your own uh, customizable t-shirts. I'm going to make one that says, like, hashtag USGS or something like that. Got quakes? There's another one right there. As of the past hour, we're still seeing some seismicity ongoing. But it looks like it is starting to calm just as of the past half hour to hour. And here's the most rec recent data right here at the end. As of about 1 p.m. Pacific Time, July 9th, 2019. So, we did see an earthquake swarm. And now they're reporting 43 instead of 42. So, again, they still are actively locating earthquakes at Mount Hood. This may take like another day for them to get the total locatable earthquake count. But as we saw, there definitely looked like there were more than 43 earthquakes, guys. They're probably not going to report the negative magnitude quakes or even the quakes at about 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. Uh, because a lot of them are occurring in such rapid succession, it's almost impossible to tell them apart. So they've got their hands full today at PNSN, Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. So that's basically everything for today. Let's see. Let's go to World and see if I missed anything else. Let's go to Newest first. Okay. Wow. Still a lot of earthquakes happening in California and Mount Hood. Alaska, Ridgecrest, California, and Mount Hood are basically the epicenters of increased seismicity for today. Again, I will be doing an analysis page tonight or tomorrow morning on the ongoing earthquake swarm at Mount Hood. Keep an eye out for that. Check out the description box below for links. Hope you guys have a great day, and God bless.